Hi everyone, today we will discuss the manual and automation testing topic. Let's begin. This is quite a popular topic that affects many aspects. But the main idea is that there will be only automated testing and no manual work in the future. Automated testing is the present and the bright future, and manual testing is a long forgotten old thing. I would like to call it a holy war, but it is not so. There are no two camps here. There are manual testers and it is believed that they did stupid primitive work. And there are testers who know the basics of the programming language and it is believed that these people do real work. So it's not even a holy battle. Automation has already won. In our opinion, everything is not so obvious. Let's discuss this topic. According to people who are involved in this already finished holy war, there is testing, and it can be done by manual way or by automation way. And doing it in automation way is the correct and right way to do it. And doing it in a manual way is ineffective and insufficient. The only thing which is left from manual testing is exploratory testing, and nobody ever does it, so who cares? You can pause the video and think about what is wrong with the scheme. For now, we'll remind you of the definition of testing. The subject is serious, so we'll use the official literature, the ISTQB. If you don't know what is ISTQB, we'll provide a link to the website in the materials for the lecture. You can pause the video and get familiar with the definitions. The ISTQB says nothing about manual testing. And it says only one sentence about automation testing. It says that test automation is the use of software to perform or support test activities. If you still haven't figured out what's wrong with the scheme, the answer is simple. Everything is wrong. The scheme is simplified and incorrect. A lot of people think that testing is writing test cases and running those. But testing is a complex process. It is not the test execution only. It consists of various test activities and tasks. Let's get familiar with those. We have a separate video related to the topic of test activities. You can check it if you want. The ISTQB defines 8 test activities in total. The process is not universal on all projects. But one way or another, a tester does all of them. Let's go through them one by one and check which ones are manual and which can be automated. The first three activities and the last one are related to the process itself. Obviously, those can be done only manually. But in the scope of this video, those are irrelevant. The holy bottle is not related to this. The holy bottle is related to these two activities, test implementation and test execution. These can be done manually or they can be done with the help of automation. A lot of testers for some reason think that it is all that they need to do. And they totally forget that before you'll be able to write test cases, you need to do a lot of work. Testers totally forget about test analysis and test design activities, which can be done only manually. In the scope of those, we analyze the requirements, identify test conditions and design test cases to cover the test conditions efficiently. It may look irrelevant and off-topic to many testers. Okay, answer these simple questions. How much time will take to write test scripts for these two simple user stories? How many scripts you will write? How many time would it take to run those scripts? When the testing will be finished? The answer is obvious, you have no idea, because if we have requirements like these, there is a lot of work to do before we can start writing test cases and automation scripts. Before starting the verification, you must do the validation. You need to understand the context of what you're testing, what stakeholders want and what end users will do. Sometimes it takes lots of time. We can start with exploratory testing, then need to have a meeting with the product owner and developers. Then write some test cases and run those manually. Some of the test cases will fail, so we'll need to write defect reports. In parallel requirements will be changed. And we need to start from scratch or at least redo what we did. 
and only when the final version of the feature is ready to be developed, we can write automation scripts. And that is the first reason why manual testing is not dead and won't die. Before you write the automation scripts, you need to do verification and validation manually. A lot of testers ignore all of this. They take perfect requirements, write simple positive and negative scenarios, and that's it. But it's only a small part of the tester's responsibilities. So this is the first half of the answer to those questions. Before writing automated scripts, you still test the feature manually and write manual tests. It's time to move on to the second part of the answer to those questions. The holy war takes place precisely within these two activities. They say that automation is faster and better. They say that automation is cheaper in the long run. In fact, automation is expensive, very expensive, and it does not always pay off. Not only the automation itself is expensive, the problem is the testing in general and accordingly, automation depends on the project. This is best explained with an example. To simplify, there are three options for maintaining test documentation. The first way is to write simple high-level checklists. It has pros and cons. But the main reason to use it is that it is cheap. You don't have detailed test cases, so to update this checklist takes minutes. The second option is to have real test cases. You'll have some test management systems. And it is expensive. Not only because writing detailed test cases is expensive, but because maintaining and updating test cases and supporting test suits requires lots of time. And the third option is to have automation test suits. You need to write and support scripts, and that takes lots of time. Especially if you start from scratch by developing the framework. A lot of people would say that in the long run, automation saves lots of money, because regression execution takes less time. And we'll come back to this in a few minutes. In terms of implementation, it's the most expensive option. Testing is not an independent process. It happens in the scope of the software development lifecycle. And the SDLC can be very different. Let's say we have a small company, which develops some B2B solutions. 1,000 companies use the app. It doesn't make lots of money. It doesn't invest in documentation. Mostly rely on communication in the team. And the team itself is 3-5 people in total. One tester and four developers. Most likely, you won't be able to write automation scripts because meetings and testing new and new stories will take all your time. Your only option will be the checklist, and even those won't be up to date. Although, it seems that this is not a frequent case. In fact, small companies often start with a simple testing. But when they grow and responsibility increases, then everything changes. It is in medium-sized companies where most people work and the only characteristic by which they can be described is diversity. The number of users increases, so the company earns more money. Thanks to this, the size of the team increases, and where there are more people, there are necessary processes and documentation. Some companies work on formal complex projects and need automation. Other companies use manual testing. But not with checklists, but with detailed test cases. Most companies use the middle option, where a certain part of testing is done manually and regression testing is mostly automated. And a certain part of companies grow into even bigger and even more profitable enterprises. Long story short, big companies have big money, they have a lot of employees and follow the best practices of agile or other development models. Automation happens on all levels, they can even deploy to production every second. As a result, Testing is also automated mostly. Based on our schema, it looks like automation is expensive and it contradicts most of the articles you can find on the internet. They say that automation is the magic wand that solves all problems and saves time and money. This is a valid argument, but in very rare situations. Please answer these questions with yes and no. Do you have time to write and update manual test cases? Does regression testing take too much time? Is it the only thing you stress about? If the answer is yes, sure automation is the thing that will solve your problems. And you need to start as soon as possible. But let us know your another screen and check if those problems are the biggest concerns on your project. 
Most problems are not related to the testing. Problems are related to SDLC. For example, lots of projects officially say that they use Agile Scrum methodology. But there is no Scrum Master, hot fixes happen during the sprint. The scope of releases and priorities can be changed several times in the middle of the spring. In addition, there is a lack of people. There are 10 developers and 2 testers. If you're working on a project with unsufficient resources and processes, the attempt to automate test cases will almost certainly fail. You should remember that the principle testing is context-dependent. We must remember that there are no universal practices and approaches that will work equally effectively on all projects. If the project is a startup with insufficient resources, the best thing to do is to use checklists and exploratory testing. But if it's a big project, a project in the medical industry, you almost certainly need to automate as many tests as possible. These are extremes, but based on them it is clear what we want to convey. Most projects are between those extremes. It is generally accepted that the way large companies work is, if not the industry standard, then at least those practices should be followed. As a result, it is believed that everyone should write and maintain automated tests and that is easy to do. Yes, it's easy when you have 20 testers and established development processes. But when you only have two and a half testers and their hands are full of work, automation becomes not a solution, but a problem. Rarely anyone talks about it. More often, testers simulate work. Automate simple scripts that are easy to copy and paste, or they write such code that is impossible to understand or maintain. As a result, the new tester often starts from scratch. Again, rarely anyone writes or talks about it. And this is the second reason why manual testing is not dead and will not die in the near future. There are a lot of projects where testing is performed only in manual way. Having said that, we want to emphasize this video was the answer to the question, will manual testing die soon? And not by answering the question of whether you need to learn it or not. Although, automated testing has its pros and cons, in terms of use of project. As a testing expert, it is highly recommended that you study automation, if not necessarily. This is not only the largest number of projects that you can work on, but with a high probability, those companies will be larger and better working conditions with some exceptions, of course. And this is our long and contradictory answer to the question, is manual testing dying? Is manual testing dead?